Hello and welcome back to Makers on Tap, <laughs> the podcast where makers face directors, drink and talk about making stuff and maker culture. I'm your host, Aaron, and joining me are Joe and Christian. We're just getting right down to the punch with this episode tonight. We keep getting sidetracked and chatting and we're already an hour past when we were scheduled to talk. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. But really, it brings us into our topic. Our, our topic tonight is how lack of sleep affects your focus. And maybe it doesn't make you so awesome, even though you think you are. You're not awesome. <laughs> Nobody is. Uh, don't yeah. remind me. Yeah, we gotta we gotta hit it right out the gate. <laughs> I'm really feeling that right now. <laughs> My wife told me tonight that I was a really bitter person. Ooh, bitter old man. That was the first you've heard that. <laughs> oh, it was not the. <laughs> the shots were fired right back. It's like you grabbed the bullet and threw it. <laughs> It just bounced the grenade right off, from, <laughs> off my Captain America shield. That was like a big trouble in the old China dagger. <laughs> yeah. It's all in the reflexes. Oh, wait. Oh, have you guys seen John Wick 3 yet? No. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> when are we going to see it? This week. We're going to go see it. I, I, I didn't go with my friends today because I promised I would go with you and Tim. And apparently you've now seen it without me. I've seen parts. I've, I, I haven't hate seen you. it all. I've seen okay. parts. Well, that's for your job, so that's yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> let's, do, let's do this episode <laughs> before we get distracted. So what are you guys drinking tonight? I'm drinking, drinking sleep depression. <laughs> Water. I'm drinking water. Chris has been moving and like working. So, yeah. you know, he hasn't slept much. I'm drinking, um, I'm trying to finish off the Smash Galaxy double IPA. This stuff is, it's growing on me. It's still not my favorite, though. Fair enough. When did you get that one? A while ago. Okay. Months. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm so excited because I live right down the road from Fryer Tux now. So now I don't have to worry about picking something up on my way home. I can literally just like walk down to Fire Talks. I'm excited because we're getting a Benny's. And it makes me feel Everybody, bad because like, it's going to be bad for Fire Talks. But I'm no, also like, excited. Here's the thing. Aaron, what are you drinking? <laughs> yes, don't cut me off. <gasps> you don't have leave me out. Head. Yes. So this Ooh. weekend, we went to Muncie, Indiana for my wife's cousin's daughter's no son's uh baptism thing what anyways is, what is that to you like cousin four times removed like a second <laughs> nephew second okay nephew nephew four times removed i don't know it, it was it was jamie's mom's sister's daughter so so like jamie's aunt's okay daughter okay i, I question why you would be there but sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah, families, you know. Yeah. Family, family. Yeah. Anyway, so that's in Muncie, Indiana, which is where Three Floyds is. Ooh. But we happened to go on the weekend of Dark Lord Days. So it wasn't even open on Saturday unless you had a ticket, which is all sold out. Oh, yeah. So I had yeah. to get on Sunday. But I came back with like three six packs, one of which is Gumball Head, which is their American Wheat Ale. Hell yeah. Describe Gumball Head's flavor. Such a weird beer. Yeah, so it's a it's an American wheat. So you, it's definitely got some some of that weedy taste that you get in like a normal wheat ale. But there's definitely some hops in it. So it's a little bit bitter, but not too much. It's enough that it would turn off your normal wheat beer enthusiast. Be like, like, ah, why is there why is there hops in here? It's like hoppy, and then on the back end, it's like, oh, I've got bubble gum in my mouth. And it's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really interesting. It's probably one of the lightest. Because uh, Three Floyds does a lot of, they do a lot of uh, IPAs and APAs. And this is like their only like wheat. Yeah. They're, they're only non, non-IPA, non but even then it's still a little hoppy. We had multiple friends at Dark Lord Days. Really? Yeah. Multiple people that were at the Murph booth were at Dark Lord Days. 
Ah, uh, okay. So you probably could have got in. Well, I, I looked up and it was like 180 bucks a ticket, and well, they were sold dang. out. They were sold out like two months ago. How how good was security? I mean. <laughs> If it, hey. if it was anything like celebration, you just walked in when the guy was talking to the cute girl. <laughs> I that still blows my mind that we were able to pull that off. <laughs> I mean, paid handsomely for our tickets and got in legitimately. <laughs> we left our mark. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We did. Anyway, on to news. Yeah, we got a lot of interesting news tonight. We do. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of which just came out today, so that's really exciting. Uh, Open SCAD just came out with a brand new version after four whole years of not having a major release. Is it Open SCAD or Open SCAD? I think it's Open SCAD. I think it's Open SCAD too. They even color it Open is in green and SCAD is in yellow. So I think yes. it's Open SCAD. But I, I always hear people say Open SCAD. And then there's like Open PCAD and like. Like that, like legitimately, there are multiple open letter and CAD softwares out there, and they're all kind of similar to Open SCAD, but not as good. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they came out with a new version, and it's got a lot of new features. Uh, a lot of these features came out over multiple uh, Google Summer of Code uh, projects. Uh, the language itself has some new functions, some new um, functions specific for testing your code. I didn't realize they had uh, unit tests in here, so that's really neat. What's a unit uh, test? It's it's code to test your code. So to, to verify, it's like it's like ancillary code that you run to test that the, your actual production code is working as intended. Hmm. So say you know in your code you write program or you write functions that do a specific little task. Mm -hmm. You write so that function takes inputs and it generates outputs. You essentially write code that will call your function, give it a, a preset input, and you match it against a preset output. Okay. If that output changes from what's expected, then you know something's up with your function. And generally, someone updated the function without updating the unit test. Neat. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, it's really big right now with uh, DevOps and stuff, because um, it's that's how you get these really big teams on really big projects. and all your big tech companies, they're writing a lot of, you know, unit tests and integration tests. And the idea is that every small change in your Git repo gets run like all the gamut of all your unit tests. Okay. And that way you can also check for regressions as well. Ah. Just, it's all done automatically. That's nice. super cool. Yeah. So it looks like they have some more uh, testing functions here in Open in Open SCAD, which is awesome. Uh, they've got some new stuff for for loops so you know that they now have the each so you can do like for each in a list or a dictionary which is nice that's super uh, handy you can add an angle parameter to your rotate extrude you can import svgs 3mf and amf files uh, you can add colors via hex codes um, you, they now have 3d mouse support and joystick gamepad support so if you have a space mouse, you can use that now. Uh, interesting thing now is you can, uh, you can, uh, it has 3D printing support. So you can uh, send the file directly to a print service partner. So like what, Shapeways? Yeah. Or you can print directly to Octoprint. That's funny, because like, <laughs> Puzzle just did a release removing slicing support native from Octoprint. So you can still bring the Kira engine in, but it's so old. It's like Kira 15.1 that they didn't feel that they were doing it justice by um, including it packaged anymore. So you have to load it as a separate plugin now. So huh. so we, we have that in OpenSCAD, but <laughs> it came so. within days of it being removed from Octoprint native. <laughs> So, Joe, I've got the open SCAD preference window open. Okay. And I've got the 3D print tab open. Neat. You can give it your Octopi URL and the API key and your type of file format. It's so like STL or AMF, 3MF. Right. But then there's drop downs for slicing engine. 
and slicing profile. Interesting. And there's load options. So you can load different slicing engines and profiles into OpenSCAD. And from there, it will slice it, then send it to Open. Or so send it, it to is Open. actually within OpenSCAD. That's yeah, you're pretty slicing cool. it. Yeah. Huh. You can Im import a slicing engine into OpenSCAD. Interesting. Yeah. So they did think of that. <laughs> I wish I wish I could code <laughs> models well so I could play with that. I know. I am I very I I'm excited that they're including AMF and 3MF in this. Uh, what are those used for? So, um they are the new standard that the industry was starting to try to move to um in like 2015-2016. Um all the way back to it looks like it was introduced in 2011 uh amf was and the problem with stl is everything is flat triangles 2d triangles so you take a, a 3d model and then you tessellate it into uh, 2d triangles and that creates all kinds of problems so you spend a lot of time getting like a nice curved surface but your nice curved surface becomes a mesh surface that's tessellated and depending on the uh, resolution that it was exported at, it could be very roughly tessellated, like we see in like the low poly uh, Pokemons or Yoda heads or whatever out there. Or it's very finely tessellated and you, you just never see it. But a lot of times, like in a round surface in a cylinder, you'll see the faceting happen. And people have trouble telling if that is an issue with the model, an issue with the slicer, or an issue with their printer. And AMF, at least, solves that by doing curved triangles. It also will bring in color data. It will bring in orientation data. And it will bring in... Um, what, is, what do they call it? Uh... Oh, constellate print constellations. So you can have multiple objects in in one um, AMF file that are all oriented in a specific orientation to each other. Uh, so you can do things like um, modeled support or uh, nested models that don't necessarily have anything to do with each other, but can be printed in an orientation that they don't interfere with each other. Um, that that's a problem in something like Kira, where Kira has like um, I call them shadows, where if there is um, say there's two points like a V in a shape, and then another point that could nest inside that shape, <laughs> Kira won't let you do that because in Kira <laughs> you <laughs> you can't put. Uh, two models within the footprint of each other without combining the models. You you can combine them, uh, but then it, it tries to do some weird things. So AMF takes care of that in the modeling side before you bring it over to the slicing side. So I'm looking more into this, and I think it might be expecting Sli Octoprint to have a slicer on it. Because hmm. when I click load, it's asking for the Octoprint URL. So I think you need to have the slicer imported into Octoprint to then import it into OpenSCAD. Interesting. So I think we'll have to play with that this week. See how that works. Anyways, let's see. A new stackable printable planetary gearbox design was released today. And it was uh, designed specifically for the tiny... Adafruit uh, stepper motor. It's a 28BYJ48 stepper motor. It's like a $5 small stepper motor you can get from Adafruit. But it is a completely stackable uh, planetary gearbox. And that's pretty neat because it makes it almost modular. So if you wanted to, you could fork it and design a, a, a different gear ratio for it. This is cool. I, I made one of these a long time ago that had was like crank driven and had the 3D printed screws and everything. And then everyone dropped it at shows and then it broke it. So I've been looking for a new one to print. Maybe I'll print this one. Definitely looks cool. Yeah. I like yeah, fun what? little gearboxes, especially when you, you like stack and stack and stack and stack and you have the model or the motor running like crazy. And then the end gears like that's not turning. 
but it is, and it's got so much torque now. <laughs> yeah, we have a member at the Makerspace who did one of these uh, planetary gearbox demonstrations where he, you put enough gears on. I mean, it may not be planetary, but it was more of a gear reduction showcase where there's enough gears on it that it would take something like a couple billion years to make one rotation at the very end gear. Oh, it yeah. Da- oh. It was Darren, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, so he has like one stepper motor on one side spinning as fast as it can. And you, you can see the proportional drop off of all the rotation of all the gears. Interesting. That's cool. Yep. What else do we have? Uh, Gerbil E. Crap. Gerbil for ESP32 had a, a software update, it now has uh, Z probing capabilities. So this is being done by uh, Bart Deering, the guy who did the polar coaster plotter. He did so much more. If you, guys, if you guys haven't gone to buildlog.net, you should. It, that was the first true, like almost rep rappy laser cutter that was out there. And it was such a fun website to go to in the early, early, early days. It was, uh, I can't remember the name of the laser cutter that was spawned out of that thing, but Bart Bart did some fun things. Well, Gerbil ESP32 firmware just got Z Pro capability, so you could hook up a one of the little pucks and have it, you know, auto home on your material and get all calibrated that way. Heck yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to try out that because the uh I'm a big fan of the ESP thirty two. I love that Gerbil was ported to it. It's 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 just silly enough to make me happy. Yeah. Because it even has a built-in web interface. Because if Gerbil wasn't good enough, now you can control it via the web. It's terrifying. <laughs> For what it's worth, this was all written to support the coaster bot, which is like a little CNC coaster plotter that is a polar CNC machine. So it rotates the coaster with a, a Y-axis arm that goes in and out. It's very cool. Hmm. It's a very yeah, it blows my mind movement. how you can get linear movement out of a rotational axis. It blows my mind. Math. <laughs> Who'd have thought math could be fun, right? <laughs> Not me. Um, For our last news topic, uh, <clears throat> this is a little bit of a snake oil. But <laughs> it wow. was the... Uh, huh? Yeah, I, I was trying to think of a nicer way to put it, but like... Shade. It's a... <laughs> So this was this was the guy at Murph. I think we actually mentioned it in one of the episodes. It's the guy who makes filla dry. The purpose behind this device is that it's kind of it's an inline filament conditioner, where it will take your filament straight from the spool. It will he, uh, heat it up. It will dry it, and kind of condition it so it's a, a consistent temperature coming out of the filla dry. And then it goes right into your printer. So at Murph, he had a demonstration unit where he had. Uh, a small monoprice printer that was sitting on top of an aquarium which had a spool of filament inside the aquarium and it was feeding the filament into the fill dry and then into the printer and it was printing a benchy and it looked really nice and that was a bit of a what we're what we're coming to find out is the we're thinking that's a bit of a a kind of a tricky demonstration because if it's PLA it's hydrophobic so it's not really going to want to absorb all that water. But anyways, this all came out of a couple YouTube videos. One of one was done by Chris's basement where he goes over a review of the fill a dry unit that um Walter from Country 3D bought at Murph. Sent it to Chris to do some reviews. Um Chris got some donor um filament from um IC3D. And he did a couple tests where he did some baseline prints with just a stock filament. Then he submerged the filament in a bucket of water for a week. Then he did a test print with just the wet filament and, and just like an inline sponge to take any like excess water out. Then he did some prints with the filament going through the fill dry And there were no discernible differences between the filament going through a sponge and the filament coming out of the fill dry 
He also ran into some issues where if there's any sort of snag in the spool with like PLA, any sort of snag will stretch out the filament as it gets if it gets stuck in the in the fill dry. So now you get inconsistent widths if there's any sort of snag. Because it just spends too much time in the fill dry. But and, and even if it didn't get snagged. Because of that. All kinds yeah. of problems. Yeah, so you got a lot of artifacts in the in the end print there. Um, but uh, even if you didn't get those snags, Chris didn't see any sort of difference between the fill dry and the standard wet spool. So he didn't think there's much to it. He sent it back to Walter at a Country 3D, and uh, he did a live stream where he tore down the machine. And that was a lot of fun to watch. What it turned out to be was uh, a lot of glue, for one thing. Like, the entire thing was just glued together. B uh, there's maybe, like, two or three screws in the whole assembly. Wow. But it it's a uh, off-the-shelf 3D printer uh, heater core. Yeah. Shoved into a small piece of aluminum plate to act as, like, a, a crude heat sink. Then a 3D printed channel to kind of make like a heat chamber. And then two fans to like suck air in, then suck air, then push the air out to make like a almost like a heated vacuum chamber. And it was a very weak vacuum. It was mostly just air moving in and out. But the idea was you, you, you get enough hot air going across the filament that it would actually dry it and condition it. But what people are what what they're finding is that it's not actually doing much of that. And uh, they they did a bit of a, a rough estimate of all the, the part costs, and it's about 30 to 40 bucks in off-the-shelf Chinese printer parts. And, uh, I mean, he's selling these units for like 140, 160 bucks, and it's not even doing the job it's advertising for. And a lot of people, these people on the stream were kind of upset that build quality and the parts going into it. and It was concerning that the parts inside it were melting, with the small amount of use that it had seen. Yes. Uh, so, you know, as, as anybody who's 3D printed knows, PLA doesn't like heat. Uh, the heater, the parts that were holding the heater core and the, I guess, heat sink, um, it was a very thin piece of aluminum. I would call it sheet. Uh, it was less than a 16th of an inch, and 16th is usually that middle ground between plate and sheet when you start changing your terminology. Um, and all of that was held in with PLA parts. Um, so that's scary because that becomes a potential fire hazard. Uh, you know, heated, heating cores inside potentially flammable plastics is not a good idea, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm taking your word for it. <laughs> well, you know. Uh <laughs> plastic plastic catches on fire at a certain point. It has an auto ignition temperature, right? It's a bad plan. Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah, and you know, it was just blowing across that that heater plate, I guess to heat the air and then yeah. the film was getting a very small amount of time in that, that heated chamber. Now, obviously it was enough to get it hot if it was melting the PLA, right? But mm -hmm. not that much time. Not enough time to I think flash off the moisture. I guess that's the idea. Yeah. Yeah. I, I asked him at Murph, I asked him if it, he had run nylon through it because PLA is not really a concern. I have six-year-old rolls of PLA that have never been dried, and they print just like brand new PLA. Um, PLA is just not that susceptible to uh, water absorption, like something like ABS or nylon is. Um, when I asked him about nylon, he assured me that it would do great things for nylon. And um, I just... I would rather know that my nylon prints are going to be good by, you know, baking them and keeping them in the dry box. Um, yeah. But 
I don't know. I, I wish it worked. It was a great idea. Um, yeah. Well, do you know if if Josh has released his stuff yet, or is he still I don't know. like? So, is there really much to release on that? Well, I didn't know if he was gonna like make an un, a, like an unveiling of like what he went through. He was gonna make like a whole post about like the process he went to go to get to it and whatnot like that. I think it's on his GitHub. Okay, if it's on his GitHub, I'm okay talking about it. Like, it's yeah. badass and it's a really simple fix that does really great stuff from what I've seen. Yeah, he just he basically took the heater portion of a de- food dehydrator and bolted it to the wall of his printer and uh, made a really awesome heated chamber. Um, we have a new guest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm going to just try and ignore him and just hope he doesn't come over here. Chris now lives with two new kitties, and one Three. of them likes him a lot. Three's nothing. <laughs> I'm going to get keep your cats. <laughs> <laughs> come back when you have four. Oh, man. I, it all depends on what you think a cat is. <laughs> um. You know, the, the food dehydrator portion works really good. He's able to maintain like a steady 90 to 100 degree temperature in his enclosure, which is awesome. And um, it's super quick. Like he, he turns that thing on and it's like at temp within like, I would say honestly, within like 45 to 50 seconds. That thing yeah. is quick. Yeah. Puts out a lot of air. Yeah. Now, I will say that the thought process behind the fill dry has some s- substantiation um yeah stratasys machines have an inline drying system that functions very similar to what the fill dry does as well um yeah so it you know it, there's precedent for that and you they are definitely running hydroscopic materials through the stratasys machines hmm. with the filament essentially in open air but it, it's in a heated chamber and uh, I think the filament roll enclosure is heated as well. So uh. it helps when you're printing in an oven. You know? Yeah. Um, so do you think there's an actual need for an inline filament conditioner? And maybe just this application wasn't the best? I think there's definite use for it, especially uh, with things like ASA um, and nylon and the PET filaments, I, I think that it, there's a definite use for it. Uh, it just needs to function well. And you know, I don't think that price point is too high for a product that works. Right. Yeah. If it worked, yeah, I could see that price point. You know, I, I pay $100 for a kilogram of alloy 910. So having a tool that makes sure that it's conditioned properly for... 150 percent of that kilograms price i think is totally reasonable but you know it depends on what you're doing with your printer and everything as well you know if that yeah if your printer was 250 dollars, that might not be a worthy addition or maybe it is well joe if you don't have much going on we can uh work on making the open source version of it i don't have much going on <laughs> That could be fun. That could be really fun. I think it'd be a fun project. And I mean, uh, all the components there were off the shelf AliExpress parts. Like you, like there was a a dip switch controlled uh, temperature board. So like a, it's like the uh, relay thermostat type thing. So you just kind of set it with a dip switch, and then it, it just goes. Well, and yeah, if you guys watch the country online teardown. As many people mentioned, um, the vape market has brought in tons of customizable heater parts that are available locally Yeah. Um, for n- almost no money. It, the heater coils for vapes are so cheap. Um, so that, that could be a really interesting project. We can call it the Vape Nation Dry. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. That's what it took. 
End it all. <laughs> Quit everything. I guess I did used to drive a Subaru, so maybe I deserve that. Oh. Um, <laughs> oh, um, vape dry. Do we have any? <laughs> I mean, if your filament's wet enough, I've I've definitely ran some nylon that looked like my nozzle was vaping. As call the it nylon, dr- call it dry nation. Out. Dry nation. Yes, Please. I can go all day. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe uh, maybe we'll uh, have a brainstorming session on this. I think it'd be a fun project. Knock it out in a month. A uh, a sleepless bl- brainstorming session. Because those go well. Um, maybe Speaking more... of sleeplessness. Yeah. Let's uh, start the topic. So Indeed. let me pull up the quote that gave me the idea for this topic. I've been listening to Adam Savage's audiobook. Um, every tool is a hammer, which I don't agree with the title, but you know, I get his point. Um, and it's been a phenomenal book. And, uh, there's a quote, this isn't a direct quote, but this is the gist. Um, there is no skill in the world at which you get better, the less sleep you have had. And, I feel personally attacked. <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, as somebody who has lived my life for the last countless amounts of years on six or less hours of sleep just to fit all of my life into the available amount of time, I do feel personally attacked in that. Um, but boy, do I agree. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's hard because like, you get so wrapped up in something and you're, you're just like, especially when you're at the end of something and you're just like, you can see the ending, you can see where you need to go, but you just like, you need to push past it. And so you think like, if I just go without a little bit more sleep, then I'm going to be able to finish this. Whereas like, if you just allowed yourself to have some like relax and like take a break from the situation, you would come back and you would finish it not only faster, but most likely cleaner as well. And you would be able to like get through a whole bunch of that. It's, it's a hard pill to swallow because like all of us are very much like I've spent, what was that one day? I spent 37 hours on a site without sleep and just Holy like, shit. yeah. Cause I was like, I have to get this done. Like I, that, I literally have to get this done. And I that's thought that's not illegal. <laughs> oh yeah. No, it was, it was horrible. I got calls the next day from HR that were like, I saw your timesheet and I was like, bet you did <laughs> Bet you're going to like paying that too. <laughs> but, um, like it's, it's one of those things where you just like, you feel like you have to push past it and you feel like sometimes you get that second wind and it's like false encouragement and it's just like, Oh, I can do this. And it's like, no, no. <laughs> You need to relax and you need to take care of yourself. Well, sometimes you get the sixth wind and then you <laughs> try to push past it. Um, I hear but, the third wind's the charm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The third wind's the devil. Um, but like, not only will you just not do your project as good, but I'm sitting here gently caressing the pad of my finger that no longer has feeling. Because I tried to push through a project and I took a brand new power planer across the tip of it and just completely planed the tip of my finger off because we had to just wrap this project up tonight and just one more hour and we're just going to get this done. And then I was in the ER till six in the morning and uh, I had to come back to the project one handed and sand all my blood off of the table I was building. So that was fun. Uh, <laughs> but on the flip side, now your finger is nice and flat. No, there's lo- there's lots of good uses for that. It, you also can't be tracked by the government. The obvious that's, thing. That's right. Yeah, it's very bulbous now. You're the invisible man now. Uh, yeah, and I have a very identifiable, identifiable fingerprint because I have like four fingertips on this finger. <laughs> <laughs> what the. Cr- like you can you can look at it and go, oh yeah, that's Joe's finger. That's <laughs> definitely Joe's middle finger. 
You know, if they're looking for you, they would just skip the fingers altogether and just like the guy with the mustache. <laughs> Bring me that guy. <laughs> yeah. It's Walking. a lot easier to make my mustache go away than my funky fingertip. Oh, well, there you go. A lot less costly, at least. <laughs> it's like... It's a hard thing, because, like... I think we've been in that spot a lot of times, where so many times I've been working on something, and it, I don't know why it seems to always come down to when I'm, like, tearing something down. Like I need to take something apart and then I'm like, I'm, I'm tired. It's like 2 AM. I just need to get this done. So I just start thinking I can rip this apart and just get it done now instead of trying to get this screw out because it's stripped out. Like <laughs> could do that. It's a possibility at this point. <laughs> and you end up like making really poor decisions. Cause like, you're just that tired and it's just yeah. like it, it's something that we need to take serious because we're getting into this habit uh as a society of thinking like sleep is for the week yes and i need to yeah. like push past sleep martyrs yeah sleep martyrs are a thing <sighs> let me let me tell you guys uh sleeplessness is not something to brag about sleeping not sleeping is uh is not something to come to work the next day and be like you guys never believed the all-nighter i pulled last night or you know they go all day through an event through the after event and be like i'm just gonna drive home that's that's just it's not a way to live a life it's not it's not but yet we glorify crunch time Mm -hmm. because like there's so many times like We'll think about, like, fuck, how many times have we bragged about how we built the Big E the first, or, like, two weeks leading up to Murph? Like, we were we were like, fuck, yeah, we got it fucking done two nobody, weeks ahead of time. Nobody lost sleep over that one. Well, I mean, we spent a lot of time on that, especially Ryan did. Like, yeah. Ryan worked his fucking ass off. But, it, like, there's been so many, like, you, you did the... Freaking massive in what? Three days? Four days? Nineteen from file new, but yeah. I, okay. I, I built it in about a week, and there were all, there was a lot of sleep lost on that. And, and, and we brag about it when we went to Murph. Straight. Like we we you were bragging about it, and it's because we glorify crunch time. This is a, like I'm gonna go off making a little bit. It's still making, but like I don't know if you guys have watched a recent. Uh, new cycle for gaming this season it's it's been a lot of this because a lot of the games that are coming out right now have been renowned as like not really up to par like they're not really being all that developed that well and it's mainly because they're going into this crunch time where it's like no just get it out like i don't mm. care what the quality is anymore get it out it has to hit this market and it's like it's there are people coming out afterwards who are going like, yeah, no, we were regularly pulling like 60, 80 hour weeks just cause. Yep. And it was like it, it, like we felt like if we didn't do it, we were going to lose our job. And that then happened to Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, totally. That's exactly what happened to Game of Thrones. Did you see the water bottle for the season finale? Yes. I thought on Reddit. Oh, my God. The it, continuity I, director needs to be fired <laughs> i'm sorry well he doesn't have a job anymore anyway so i mean uh, he's, he's just not cut off he just needs to not be brought back for the prequels or whatever they are but like yeah. so th this quote came to me at a fun time because um i i have more time than i should um and because of that I haven't been pulling all nighters and I, I have been going to bed at a reasonable time and getting up at a reasonable time and like living a more normal sleep schedule for the last month or so. And I have to be completely honest. I'm clearer headed than I used to be. Uh, I have, better focus than I used to be. I'm way more motivated than I used to be. And, you know, I'm, I'm getting up and putting my 
kids on the bus and everything. And I used to be in the spot where like I would they'd like get out the bus and then I would instantly be looking for the first flat surface I could find to fall back asleep. And I don't do that anymore. I'm like the kids are on the bus and I'm, you know, sitting down and working on my next my first project for the day. Or I'm doing whatever I need to be doing to get ready for the day or getting ready for a meeting or whatever. And it's a completely different mindset. And I think it's purely because I'm just not staying up till two in the morning every night. Like I was for a long time. Uh, it's, it's a very strange feeling to be uh clear headed, motivated Joe versus, uh, uh driven by excitement and creativity and um also looking for the next place to nap joe <laughs> it's definitely an interesting trade off it uh, is cuz my my daughter is now 13 months old almost 14 months old and she's getting into everything now so i feel like i even have i have even less time now than i did just a couple months ago when she was crawling slowly or just not crawling at all so now my only free time is when she goes to bed, which is about eight ish. Mm -hmm. Which, if I want, if I want to go to bed at a reasonable time, like ten, that gives me only two hours to try and get anything done I wanted to get done uh, today. Or if I can take that trade off and you know work till eleven or twelve, and then you know drop my hours of sleep down to you know six or seven hours a night. Yeah. Um, I so just last month what's what's this month March April May no it's in May so yeah. a couple, so just in the beginning of this month there is a really good uh, TED talk by Matt Walker on called uh, sleep is your superpower and this I saw this on Reddit a while back and when you mentioned uh, we're going to talk about this tonight I I went and looked this up cuz it's a really good so he's a he's a he's a sleep researcher and he's been he did a really good tech talk on uh, how, as a society, we we tend to glorify uh, people who you know stay up late, who don't sleep, and how that's you know long term damaging you and shortening your lifespan and damaging your health. And you know, after watching that, you know, over the past month, I've been trying to go to bed by ten, you know, every night, um, making maybe maybe one or two exceptions, um, reduce the alcohol that I drink. To, you know, because that affects your sleep. Mm -hmm. I've been feeling a little bit better, but then again, I'm also not getting as much done as I used to, and that's frustrating. That a big feel. <laughs> it's definitely frustrating because you know, not only am I trying to keep moving forward on some projects, I'm trying to learn new things as well. Like I, I just started a new uh, Udemy course on uh, Ruby on Rails programming stack, so I'm trying to I'm trying to spend an hour a day on that. But now it's an hour I'm not spending on something else that I. I want to get done. So it's, you know, we're like this podcast. We're now at, you know, quarter to 12. Yeah. You know, it, it's a trade off. It's rough because like, and this it like sleep kind of hits home for me. Um, mainly because like I have a sleeping disorder and I didn't know it for the longest time that I even had it. Um, I just thought that, Oh, I was just tired. Um, I found out that I have sleep apnea and boy, do you learn how much like you need to actually sleep when you have sleep apnea? Yeah. <laughs> um, because like when, like at first, um, I was guided by my insurance. Like they told me like, Hey, if you do not like actually hit these marks, we're not paying for anything. And so I actually had to hit certain marks with my uh, sleep testing um, that, like, they would, my device wirelessly sends back to my doctor. So it's through a cell signal. Like, they get my results the minute I sleep. Um, I hate that so much. <laughs> it is. But it's also, like, if I end up dying in my sleep, they can call a doctor. <laughs> um so oh, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a trade off. Yes. Trade -off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but because of that, I was forced to hit those marks. And when I did, holy crap, like 
before that, I was having trouble driving. I was having trouble staying focused. Like my work productive was down. Like I was just constantly exhausted at work. When I was forced to like sleep eight hours a night and like do deep sleep, like with my CPAP and everything, the next like three months I was like on fire. Like I was like, I was constantly like on the ball. I could like drive with no problems. I used to think that I, I still do think that I have road hypnosis, um, but it's like not nearly as bad uh, as it used to be. Whereas like I could just fall asleep like driving. And it's just like, no, nope, I'm just going to pass out now. Now it's like, I still get tired, but it's like not nearly as bad. I can still function. I can still go. But it, it like sleep is just, it's something that it's going to help you be a better maker if you just take that into account. Yeah. Like it's, it's not something that you should be it, like, we need to kind of kill the mentality of sleep is for the week because it's. It's not like if you want to be the best, like the best maker in your mind, you need to take all of these factors. Like, hell, we could make an episode about food nutrition, especially since part and some of us are going into like aquaponics gardening and like trying to make a better diet for ourselves. And Aaron, you got the, the garden. Like you're obviously wow. taking health into somewhat of your account. Like I need to talk about that. You yeah, do. Go ahead. <laughs> like we're we're all like that's a whole nother area, but like all that to say, making is not just about like having the idea and executing it. Like when you want to be the best maker, you have to take in not only your mental health, your physical health, and all the other things that go alongside that to make you the best and most productive maker you can be. Yep. And, and go along with that, with the nutrition side, you also have to be really careful about um, things like stimulants. Um, because just because you're awake doesn't mean that you're focused. And like caffeine and, you know, if you dive into the more illicit side of the stimulants to keep you awake and to keep you driven during like your deadlines and your crunch times, um, it, it can get really, really scary. Uh, we had a friend that was experimenting with sleep and sleeplessness and taking some non FDA approved supplements from overseas and like driving to like 60, 70 hours a week without sleep and doing some really, really sketchy things to his body. And it eventually got to the point where like, his friends and his fiance started to like catch on to like why he was so weird lately. And his fiance threatened to leave him over it because it, it was, it, it had gotten so rough. Um, so sleep is fine to experiment with like things like micro naps and, um, you know, the, the ways that you can play with circadian rhythm and the ways that you can play with uh, REM to try to, like stage out your day, especially if you have a career that will allow you to do things like that. I think that's a really interesting way to see what works for you because everybody's a little different. Yeah. But, um, you know, if you do mess with those things to try to be more productive or to try to get more time in your day, it's also really important to have a touchstone, whether it's your spouse or a friend, um, to just make sure that you're staying on your path because sleep can do some messed up things to your head. <laughs> and, you know, sleep can do sleep. Sleeplessness can kill you. Like, um, in fact, this weekend, four years ago, I lost a friend, uh, cause he was doing the, the sleep martyr thing. And he just got done running a festival and, was driving home drive drove seven hours 20 minutes from his house got in a huge car accident head on collision he had fallen asleep at the wheel and yeah it it's just not worth it it's not worth it to play with it no so. it, and it, it like i responsibility we should add like if you are going to consider doing um sleep testing or trying to mess with your own sleep patterns, 
uh, please consult your doctor first. Yeah. Like, like that, that's something that you shouldn't take lightly. Like sleep is something that absolutely should um, be considered by a professional and not just the stuff you find on the internet like us. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like that, that's just responsible. Um, well, and you'd be amazed at what you can find out about yourself if you are having sleep issues or if you're having focus issues and you do consult a doctor. Yeah, you may there there may be things that can be done medically to like bring that focus back. Well, um, it, yeah, no, it, like, no. It, it, it was crazy because like I went in for my sleep study because my girlfriend at the time was just like, you're hitting me in your sleep. And so I was like, I was going in to try and figure out that. And I was like, why am I moving so much? And then they like hooked up a monitor to me and found out that I was having seizures in my sleep. <laughs> but it like, it, you may not think something's connected and like stuff like that, but it's like, it may be like, there may be something that you need to address. Like, my diet was another huge thing as to why I was so exhausted and everything. And like, yeah, turns out if you just eat McDonald's three times a day, it's going to make you not happy. <laughs> You're yeah. not going to love it. <laughs> yeah. This episode brought to you by McDonald's. Right. <laughs> like, I wish, man. They'd probably pay us so good. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Speaking of, anybody want to be a sponsor? <laughs> um. <laughs> Yo, Chipotle, hook me up with that money. <laughs> Or burritos. I'd be about I, uh, it. A beer and a burrito is excellent. <laughs> um, Just completely sponsored by Costco hot dogs. Oh, please. No. <laughs> please. That, that's like that ANET sponsorship that could have happened. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, no. <laughs> do, you, do you want instant diarrhea or your house burning down? Check out our sponsors today. <laughs> I mean... Somebody probably wants one of those things. You never know. It's the world's a weird place. <coughs> oh oh man. gosh. So yeah, sleep's good, and you should look into it. I know somebody resonates with us on the uh, sleep is bad and it's killing my productivity thing. Yeah. It, you know, take two weeks and put off your productivity a little bit if you can, and just get some sleep. And see what happens to your productivity. See what happens to your focus. See what happens to your creativity. Because you know, for the longest time, I was using sleeplessness to drive creativity. And now I'm not creative anymore. Uh, that was a bad option. <laughs> also, wash your damn sheets. <laughs> Have you been to my house, Aaron? <laughs> <laughs> That was just me talking to myself. I, yeah. yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> I got cats now, so I got to do it more often, too. <laughs> I I never heard the word sleep hygiene until recently uh, when my wife started figuring out her sleep issues. And, like, it's such a a resonant apt. word. It's like, an it, apt term. Yeah, it makes such sense. Like, it's dirty sleep is bad. And dirty places to sleep are bad. Like even just like having clothes all over the place makes it harder for me to sleep because it's just like chaos. And I live I live in chaos. I am not an organized person. So Oh, I I yeah. No, I like literally the moment I moved in here, I like had everything like lined up and everything looks good down here. <laughs> Holy shit, that's pretty organized. Yeah, I do not like disorganized. I am very, I very much, my bedroom has to be very clean and very organized for me to go to sleep. I will stay up and, like, do shit. Yeah, I I never really got it until recently. I, a friend of mine, um, he, he told me a long time ago, like, one of the best things he does for himself every day is make his bed. And I was like, why? Like, you're just, you're just going to unmake it 12 hours later. It's... And he's like, trust me, just make your bed for a week. And, like, every day you come home and it's like, oh, I, I have this nice place to come home to. I have this nice place to go to sleep. He's like, it, it makes my whole day better knowing I'm going to come home to a clean bedroom. And I'm like, I never got it. 
I get it now. <laughs> it's it, I don't do it still, but I get it. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of the same mentality because like it's you getting ready for your day, and it's like I very much I had somebody tell me early on in the company that I work for, um, if you're gonna work from home, you still need to get in your uniform, and like it's one of those things where it mentally puts you in that mindset of starting the day. Because if you sit in your in like PJs, you sit in sweats all day, you're gonna be in that mentality. And you're gonna be like, mm-hmm. no, I'm at home, I'm just relaxing, like I'm good. It's like, no, you are still at work. And it's kind of the same thing. Like you make your bed to like, I am getting ready for my day. I'm not allowing things to hold me back. And so it's it's yep. it's that organization of just that could be a whole nother episode, is organization. <laughs> Should be another episode. Come help me. Organize. <laughs> You've seen my garage. I I have. You don't want me to organize, dude. <laughs> yeah, I do. Come help. I feel like we've talked about this already. Organization, probably. Clean versus dirty workspaces. I think. Oh, yeah. maybe. Yeah, it definitely like it helps. Mm-hmm. Maybe I wasn't on that episode. Maybe that's why I was. I don't know. I'm gonna find it. But it, it like. You you warm up that hot tub ah. and uh, I'll be over there. I'll help you out. It it's warm. Episode fourteen: Come Chaos versus Organized. Come on over. <laughs> the one where Joe and Aaron discuss how they suck at organizing. Hey, that's why <laughs> I wasn't on it. <laughs> yeah, you missed it. Yeah, I I suck at organizing. I'm trying really hard. I'm getting better. That's like my life. You guys came and saw my office and like how everything is like has a special place, like to the point of where I freaking bought a cabinet so I could put my figurines. It's because you have three fl- had three floors of space. You could spread out. I mean, yes, you have what four bedrooms and an entire basement. It's full of children. <laughs> You're not wrong. It is I, full of children. It's full of children. I, I have three packed. children and two adults that live in this house. You know how much stuff is in this house? You know how many Jordans? <laughs> <laughs> Please. Zero in this house. But yeah, I hope somebody got the reference. Please. Uh, <laughs> Jordans. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Old memes. <laughs> All right. All right, you guys. So, get some sleep. And Wash your sheets. open SCAD's cool. I think that's what you should have gotten out of this episode. Yes. Survey? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Damn it. Yeah. yeah. I put that thing. whole thing together. So, if you made it this far, that means you're a hardcore fan. Congratulations. You win a prize. As our, <laughs> as our hardcore fans... We would like you to take a two-question survey that we'll have linked in the show notes to kind of uh, tell us what you think of the show and what could we do to make it better. We're starting to get to a point where we're trying to make the show better, but it's just our opinions and our our own biases on what we think the show should be. But really, we want to hear from you guys and see what you would like to hear more of or if maybe you want to hear more about the beer or less about the beer. Maybe you want to stay more on topic. Whatever you think might make the show better, just throw it in there. If you want to stay more on topic, you're going to be sorely (laughs) disappointed. But we'll try. (laughs) Right. Also, sorry if my audio sucked this episode. I am in a brand new location, and I've been kind of watching it, and I don't know what's going to happen. (laughs) (sighs) (laughs) But thank you for listening. You're awesome. I'm talking to you directly, person who's on the other end of this. You are great, and you look amazing today. Are you talking to me? I can be I talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> you need oh, to pop gosh. on this episode later? Go ahead. I'm talking directly right, to you. All right, you dinguses. <laughs> this is the end of the podcast. Keep making stuff. <laughs> Bunch of jack wagons.